think one of the most annoying parts of FPV is getting a failsafe, where your drone suddenly loses connection with the transmitter and drops to the ground. If you've been flying for a while, you've probably had this happen, especially if you've flown more than one or 200 yards from where you started. And it can be very sudden, you know, it's not like video where you can fly through a little bit of static and recover from it. If you get to where you're at the maximum of that range, then you can lose that connection very quickly. And then there's, there's no coming back from it. It really takes you out of the moment and, you know, kind of ruins that enjoyment. You can be in the flow of flying and then suddenly uh, it's all over and you've got to go walk and pick up your drone. I recently learned about a new control system called Express LRS that promises to fix a lot of this. And I had the chance to purchase some of that gear and I've got it now. So I wanted to go through some of what Express LRS does and then I'll show you the gear and eventually we're gonna put it in a drone and try it out and see what happens. So first let's talk about why Express LRS is something that you should be excited about. The first thing is that it has extremely long range and extremely low latency. Some people have tested the range on Express LRS at up to 25 miles, which is way farther than most of us need for flying drones. Uh, that's, you know, that's really incredible range, and there are a couple of other systems that can come close to that, but Express LRS seems like it's really got that covered. And it's able to do that at a very low latency. So that's one, one complaint that people have with systems like Crossfire that do have really long range is that sometimes the latency can be a little bit high and that can be a problem if you're trying to race or trying to do something that requires really fast twitch reactions. Express LRS somehow seems to be able to do both of these things extremely well and that's very exciting. Another thing that is great about Express LRS is that it's open source. That means that there's no single company that has complete control over the system and has any sort of patent on it and is the only one that can produce transmitters and receivers or anything like that. So there's community development for it. It's a very active community of people working on this stuff. And anybody could produce a transmitter or receiver and sell it. Um, it could even be built into drones in the future. And, and I think it probably will be, which is something that you don't see on a lot of these other systems. That would require some sort of licensing cost. So that's really, really exciting. It also means that you might be able to get Express LRS gear a lot cheaper than you can with other brands. Whereas with something like Crossfire, the transmitter module may cost you $100, and then the receiver may cost you another $40, so on and so forth. Uh, with Express LRS, uh, these things can be way cheaper than that. You can get a receiver for something like $15 or $20, uh, and the transmitter module is also extremely cheap compared to you know, anything from Crossfire or FR Sky, um, you know, any of the other uh, proprietary control systems. The third reason is that Express LRS uh, has the potential to be extremely small on the receiver end. You'll see that here in a moment when we look at the receivers, but uh, it's pretty impressive how small it can be, and that could be great for micro drones. So I think there's a lot of reasons to be excited about Express LRS. Like I said, I recently had the chance to purchase some Express LRS gear. Up until very recently, it's been completely DIY. So I mentioned that it was open source, and although people have been uh, messing with Express LRS by soldering their own transmitters and receivers, you know, that's not something that's very approachable for most people, but that's starting to change. So Happy Model has been producing Express LRS transmitters and receivers, and those are just starting to become available. I was able to purchase some from Makerfire and Fatboy FPV. I'll have links below if you want to check those out. Um, and I've had both of those come in the mail, so let's just go and take a look at them now. Okay, so now that we're at the bench, let's take a look at some of the Express LRS gear that I purchased. We'll start with the transmitter module, and this is how it came to me from the company. And that's why Express LRS isn't exactly user-friendly yet. So the transmitter module seems like it's a little bit of assembly required. For comparison, this is what an FR Sky transmitter looks like when you receive it. So this isn't quite as user-friendly as purchasing a module off the shelf, but I will say it doesn't look like any soldering is required, and I think that this, this isn't actually that bad. Uh, I'm sure eventually you'll be able to purchase a full module, but um, this, is, this is pretty simple. Let's go ahead and move that stuff to the side, and next we'll take a look at the receiver. And this is from Happy Model. I purchased this from Fatboy FPV. 
And this is the PPRX version of the receiver. So there's a couple of different receivers for Express LRS, and this is the smallest one, and it's what I was most interested in. So we're gonna start with that. So there it is, that's really, really tiny. So I'll, I'll put some close-ups in so you guys can see that a little bit better, but this is what I was really excited about with Express LRS. This receiver module is extremely small, and what people are saying is that it should still have really good range and really good performance. So, you know, this could be great for micro drones where you don't really have room for a big receiver or big antenna. Um, and yeah, I, I think this is pretty cool to see. I, I hope that other receivers do this sort of thing in the future. This little tiny antenna is called a ceramic antenna. And you can see that it's just this little square that sticks up and there's no extra wires that you need. There's, there's nothing like a normal FR Sky receiver or a Crossfire receiver. It's just that little box. That's the entire antenna. So this is really, really cool. I also want to show you how this uh, receiver compares to a FR Sky XM Plus. So we've got the Express LRS PPRX there on the left, and here is a FR Sky XM Plus on the right. So that just shows you the, X the XM Plus is one of the smallest FR Sky receivers you can get and the Express LRS version on the left is less than half of that size. It doesn't have those huge wires coming off of it, uh, and even the circuit board itself is less than half the size. So this is really cool, um, you know, and, and like I said, it's just, it's so small. It's incredibly small. So this was some of the Express LRS gear. I didn't show everything. There are a couple of other receivers you can get. There's one where you can upgrade the firmware over Wi-Fi. Um, but I was really interested in testing this PPRX one because it's just so small. So that's why I started with that. And all of this gear has been the 2.4 gigahertz version of Express LRS. There's actually also a 900 megahertz version. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that stuff too. So again, we've got a transmitter and a receiver. And we'll go ahead and take a look at both of those things. All right, this is the 900 megahertz version of the transmitter. Wow, that is beefy. Look at that thing. There's a massive, massive heat sink on the back of this one. Um, that's, that's interesting. This looks like a very similar construction to the uh, 2.4 gigahertz version. I do notice that my kit didn't come with a module box. I guess I'll have to 3D print one, that's okay. Um, some radios come with that module box, but if your radio doesn't have one and you wanna do this, just make sure you're aware of that so that you purchase the uh, module box separately with it. Um, so that's the transmitter. And let's also take a look at the receiver module. So here's the receiver in the middle there. And that receiver is pretty interesting. So it's not quite as small as the 2.4 gigahertz one. Let's see. So it's not quite as small as that, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, I think it might actually be smaller than the FR Sky XM Plus. Let me pull that out again so we can take a look. Okay, so we've got the Express LRS 900 megahertz, Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz, and FR Sky XM Plus down here. So you can see that the Express LRS 900 megahertz receiver is still smaller than the FR Sky XM Plus but the antenna is a lot bigger. I'm a little bit concerned about that because that's not going to fit too well on a micro drone. So that, that might be a challenge with the 900 megahertz, but you know, the actual receiver itself is pretty small. So this is basically what things look like. Like I said, um, you know, really interesting stuff. I plan to start with the 2.4 gigahertz version for testing because I think it's the most interesting. It's much smaller than the 900 megahertz, both the uh, transmitter antenna and the receiver, uh, especially the receiver. And if the 2.4 gigahertz gives us enough range and performance, then that might be good enough. I feel like I've been hearing online that most people are thinking 2.4 is going to be the way to go. So I'm gonna start with that, but eventually I will install the 900 megahertz in a drone as well so that we can compare those two against each other and see what that extra size actually does give you and see whether that's worth it. So as I said, I think Express LRS has a lot of promise. It seems to be this rare combination where it's better in almost every way than any existing control link, and it's also cheaper and likely to be more readily available. 
I think that there's a lot to be excited about with this. Uh, you know, I think we're going to start seeing this in bind and fly drones, especially since Happy Model is one of the companies making these. You know, they make a lot of the smaller uh, drones that people are excited about, like the Larva X, the Mobilite 7, uh, you know, and, and they make all those drones already. And so I bet they'll be building Express LRS into those before long. And that's really going to accelerate the adoption. So. I know I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited about it too. My next step is gonna to be to install one of those receivers that I just showed you. Uh, and I'm gonna build the transmitter and then figure out how to bind it all together and then take it for a flight and see what happens. I think I'm gonna plan on this being a series of videos. I don't wanna make one 30 minute video about it. So I'm just gonna make a bunch of short videos and kind of show you that process. And you know, we can go on that journey together. Um, it may not be quite as easy to set up, so We'll see what happens and uh, learn as we go. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you want to be notified when I post a new one of these, then you know make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, but otherwise, uh, just stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys in the next one.